My message today is you are covered in God's righteousness. All right. All right. Now, All right. I'm covered in this, robe, in this robe today, and when I wear it, I feel privileged. I feel actually like the blessings kind of overtake me when I got this robe on. Him. But I want you to understand, this is just an article of clothing. This is an article of clothing. That's all it is. It's a good, good. It feels good. But it's an article of clothing. That's all. It's a covering. But what I'm going to tell you about today is not an article of clothing. It's a article covered in you in righteousness. Amen. Righteousness. And you have to understand what righteousness is when I say you're covered in God's righteousness. That's right. Yeah. It makes a difference. Right. Article of clothing, you're going to take that off. You'll put yeah. it on. You'll hang it up in the closet. You'll take it to the cleaners. You'll press it, whatever it takes to make that look good for the moment. But after a while, you may not wear it anymore. I don't even wear this that often, so I feel good when I wear it. So I don't wear it that often. So when I wear it, I feel fairly, I feel well wearing it. I feel like I just say it. I feel honored. I feel yes. more honored that I get an opportunity to minister God's word. That's probably yes, the right. greatest honor I can have. But all of this is temporal. Right. That's this right. is going to be gone. This is the same. Like people say that no matter the hill of But right. the main thing is when God covers you in his righteousness, Amen. Amen. that's no escape from that. You can't take that off. You can't hang it up in the closet. You can't send it to the cleaners. I'm going to tell you something about God's righteousness today and how we are covered in his righteousness. Righteousness, biblically, is a concept that goes beyond our, our thinking or our moral consciousness. You know, we say righteousness, we can let it flip off our tongue like it's ain't nothing to it. But righteousness is deeper than you might want to think. Right. It's a, you know, people back in the 60s and 70s, hippie days and all that, I've been back in that era. I live now, I'm a baby boomer, so I lived in that era. And back then, they'd go, man, that's that's heavy, baby. Uh -huh. Ooh, that's heavy. That's right. And I'm going to tell you something. Righteousness falls in that same category. That's heavy. And you have to actually dissect righteousness to a certain extent so you can understand how God gave us or allowed us to have that feeling of knowing we are a righteous group of people. That's why, they, that's why in Scripture tells us, tells us about being peculiar. Right. We're peculiar, too. Mm -hmm. That's right. We are righteous. Our righteousness, like I said, goes beyond mere mortal understanding or correctness. I'll say correctness is even better. But righteousness is about being right in the eyes of God. Right, right, all right. And I'm going to tell you something. When we start this walk, we're excited about the things we do and how we do them, but we're not right. We're not right with God. We still got some things we're trying to kind of like hold on to back here. Mm -hmm. I still want to yep. hold on to that right back there. Yep. I still want to hold on to that back there. I still want to hold on to that back there. We're still trying to hold on to some stuff <laughs> back in the back. Yep. And being right in God's eyes, mm -hmm. we kind of let that go. We right. okay. go. Jump, that, go. jump that garbage, yeah. go. Yeah. But the good thing about that is that it's not just about adhering to a set of rules. It's that believers like you and me, like you and I, we receive this through faith in Christ's sacrifice. So actually, Christ went through something for us mm -hmm. so we can be called righteous in God's eyes. Amen. So we don't, Amen. this ain't something we just walk into and we say, oh yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm righteous. No, you're not. Amen. Take a break here. Because basically, you are not righteous mm -hmm. in your own eyes. Amen. In God's eyes. You're righteous because God sees you through Christ Jesus. Eyes. He doesn't see you in a moment of your sin that you've done or the right. things you've committed or the wrongs that you did to other people or the things you said about folk. He sees 
sees you through Christ. That's why he sent them. Because he couldn't see you. Amen. Perception of who we are. He can only see you after he sent a son to the cross for us. Then he can see you as righteous. And that's the only time he can actually see us. Mm -hmm. It's through Christ's eyes. Amen. And he can see us as righteous. Amen. So, God, that God-centered attribute about righteousness is being right in the eyes of God. Excuse me, in the eyes of God. But it was through Christ's sacrifice that he sees us. When we align with righteousness, we align to God's standard. And God's standards are, who? They're, they're high. They're very high. But his standards and his purposes are high because basically he is set upon high. He sees us and he looks down upon us and he said, well, those are my children and I see them. But God puts on the glasses and he looks over here at his son. And then when he looks at his son, he looks at you. Mm -hmm. And he says, everything you did, I don't see that. Mm -hmm. That's in the sea of forgiveness. But through him, mm -hmm. I see you mm -hmm. like I see him. Yeah. And that's the righteousness. Amen. You have to understand that it's deeper than we think it is. This is right, a lot deeper right. than... We want to perceive it's just right, but it's not. It's beyond that. It's, yes, it is. It's kind of like we say justice and fairness, okay? It's like righteousness is closely <clears throat> tied to justice and fairness. Because if we talk about what we deserve, right. we won't go there. All right. All right. We won't go fairness and justice in that aspect. We better stay in for God, how God sees right. us. So, <laughs> in that in that aspect, we say it's, it involves treating others with, with equity and, and and making sure everyone receives what they're due. And in Psalm 103, 106 and 3, it says, Blessed are, are they who observe justice, who do righteousness at all times. But we hate no righteousness at all times. Even though we are seeing righteousness through God, through Christ, looking at us through Christ's eyes, it's hard for us to be righteous all the time. Mm. It's hard to walk in the precepts that Christ has set for us. It's hard to do the things that we should be doing. It's hard to walk in the standard that is set before us. But you know what? We're able to do that not just out of the obedience of God's commandments. We're able to do that because as long as we stay rooted and grounded and understand who we are in Christ Jesus, we can walk in that way. We can continue to live that way. Continue to worship that way. To continue to tell somebody else about how they can become or how they can be like you are. Not to be haughty or boastful, but to let them know I'm this way because, and only because, Christ died for me. Amen. He did something for me that I can become who I am. Amen. Otherwise, I'm, I'm the filthy rags. Right? Amen. And because of Jesus Christ, because of what he did, God sees us as righteous people. We are righteous. righteous. And you know the good thing about righteousness? Righteousness is a gift from God. Mm -hmm. It's not something that we did or we earned or we deserved or we had to come into it. It is a gift from God. Righteousness literally, it's not something we achieved All right. or we did on our own merit. It's actually it's a gift from God. For those, and you know the gift, is, the, the way you get that gift, is, it's so easy. You get the gift because you receive Christ. Amen. When you receive Christ, you get the gift. Amen. You get that gift of righteousness. And that's, that's what's so awesome. The only gift, the only free gift that we'll ever get in this lifetime that I know of. Because a lot of times people send you, people send you, and with our phones and everything we got, we pull them out of every interval. 
everybody's got something on that phone that they're trying to give you for free. Mm-hmm. Or they say they're trying to give you for free, but they actually want them nine or ten numbers off your credit card, mm-hmm. or they want your social security number, or they want right. something from you. Right. So you're not going, in the end, you're not going to receive anything free. Right. Right. And the only free gift I've ever got that I knew was a guarantee yeah. was the free gift of the salvation that came from Jesus Christ. That's right. That was the right. gift I got. Yeah. And see, that gift can't be taken away. Right yeah. All right. Ain't nobody gonna say, well, when we get through getting these numbers, we're gonna go ahead and you're gonna get this free gift, but then we're gonna charge every month because we're gonna send these things to you. Right. You don't have to deal with that kind of thing. Because when you walk away and you say, Jesus, I accept you as my Lord and Savior, come into my life. I know I'm a sinner, I know I messed up. <coughs> When I receive you as my Savior, when you take that, mm-hmm. when you receive that, it's a done deal. It's it's like this robe. <laughs> you put it on, and you get to keep it on. Amen. You don't take it off. Amen. You keep it permanent. I mean, I'm gonna take this robe off because it's gonna get out out there and out there. But <laughs> the other thing about it, even though I take this robe off, I'm still righteous through Christ Jesus. Right. I still get to keep it. Right. I still get to keep the righteousness. Right. He ain't gonna take that away from me. So I'm thankful that even though I've made so many mistakes and I fall short of God's perfection and what He wants me to do, and I've sinned in one way or another. We all have. Yeah. We all have. You know. You know. Unintentionally, I find this kind of kind of hard sometimes. Sometimes. Even though we didn't intend to do something that we did, yeah. or even though we made some mistakes, Amen. or we stumbled in some direction, and it wasn't our intent, but it happened. Yeah. And when you stumble or you fall, we have a God that loves us so much. Like that song said, there's a God who hears us. Yeah. And he's willing to pick you back up. I'm going to tell you something. I'm going to get off the stuff. I'm going to take a sidebar here. When I look at when I, when I look at Brother Rupert and his sweet wife, that's like a like a renewing. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I see him on Facebook. He didn't get me jealous. So I got uh, tight on my game. Uh, man. Uh, but that's that's that love is the love that Christ has that's in right. righteousness. That's right. When we see that that's an example of righteousness. We're living in a time of where even at Right ages that we are now, we can find so much love yeah. in someone else that cares for us. And we don't have each other. I'm telling you, God gives us these blessings with one another mm-hmm. so we can appreciate each other and yeah. live our lives out in this fleshly body until the earth suit is gone and then we fall to be in heaven. And like I said, we have an opportunity to live in this righteousness and in its righteousness, God's faithfulness is seen as a part of the Lord's covenant. We are part of this covenant. And in that covenant, he acts righteously when he performs you know, saving deeds to his people. And saving deeds are Jesus Christ. Those saving deeds are letting you know, or you letting someone else know, that there's a God that loved you, that sent his son for you, so you can receive this righteousness. You can put on this righteousness yeah. and live in this Amen. righteousness Amen. for the rest of your earthly life. Yeah. And after beyond this, you don't have fun. We don't, you don't want Amen. 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 When we leave here, yeah. we're going to be rejoicing. Wow. Yes, we you know, we, we, we went to Hawaii a year or so ago, and I thought we was in like heaven on earth. They thought Hawaii was all that, all that, all that. But I'm gonna tell you something. That's not even <laughs> a small street where we go. That's not even a. That's not even a tip of the iceberg. God has so much for us. Yes, He does. He has so much to present. That's to right. Us. That's right. But we have to understand that through the righteousness of Christ, 
we had the opportunity to be there, to go there, to be a part of that. I'm going to miss out on you. Mm -hmm. I, I'm not ready to go right now. That's the thing I think the Lord wants me to do, but I do know that uh, it's going to be far better than what we, what we got down here. All right. Amen. Amen. Righteousness is about being right with God, but living justly and obeying His commandments, as I, said, as I said earlier. And it's a gift we receive through faith in Jesus Christ, and it transforms our lives as we seek to align with God's purposes and standards. And you know, when I say that, I'm saying that we can't actually align with God's standards unless we understand what His standards and His and as, as purposes is ours, who we are. And when we find out who we are and why we are who we are, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. then we know and understand the standards and the purposes that God has set in motion for Amen. us. Amen. We know how to walk. We know how to act. We know what to say. We don't say something and then you can't suck it back in because it's too loud. We think. We let the Holy Spirit lead and guide That's us right. in right. what we're going to say before we say it. And then right. when we say it, we have words of blessing. We have words of, of, we'll say words of adoration to someone else. To give someone love or give someone a hug or give someone a compliment. <coughs> or say something that's going to be uplifting, that's upbuilding. Right. The Holy Spirit right. never comes in an angry, yeah. anxious Upset matter. He Amen. always comes sweet. She always said, sweet. She always said, always sweet. Amen. It comes to you in a sweet mode where when you are engrafted with the Holy Spirit, then your, your righteousness is shown That's right. when you give it to other people. Mm -hmm. When you give them that love that Christ gave you through his righteousness. You are, at that point, you are righteous. I can't say enough about righteousness because I lived an unrighteous life for so long and then when Christ turned me around and showed me this is who I am. Mm -hmm. This is what you are supposed to be. Yeah. Then I had a chance to understand wow, now I gotta catch up. Mm -hmm. I got some things I gotta do. And I thank God that I'm doing them. I'm getting a chance to do them. Yeah. I'm getting a chance to sit up and minister to you guys about how he ministers to me. I he wakes me up in the yeah, night man. and says, you know, I <laughs> <laughs> he wakes you up in the night and tells you, hey, uh, I got something for you. You need to tell the people about, about righteousness. Now, I told you, you go find it and go do it. So when he sends you out, it's exciting to get into the word of God and find what righteousness That's is. Right. Or find the cycles you have to go through. And you know something? It's awesome to know God. And that's how really how you really know that God is working through you through his son when he gives you a message that you're comfortable with. You Amen. can display, you can give it out. And I'm gonna tell you something. If nobody in here got nothing, I'm gonna walk away out here for <laughs> 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 everything he gave me. Amen. And if everybody sits there like Mm. What are you talking about? I'm walking out and say, wow, Lord. I sure got a lot out of that. Sorry I didn't fall quite out of goddamn, but I sure got a bunch. Amen. So you have to grab everything you can when a pastor or someone is, is giving what they have to give you. And I try to break it down to a level where I ain't trying to be, I'm not trying to be going over nobody's head. I'm a simple man, but a simple message. And that's it. Amen. So you see, we're clothed in righteousness. We are righteous. We have that righteousness through Christ. And we are believers. That's right. I'm going to give you a couple examples. I'm going to start to close and come down off of this thing. But I'm going to tell you something. Think about Abraham. Mm -hmm. Abraham, I think he was a righteous man. I think Abraham was pretty righteous. Mm. The Bible tells about how Abraham was righteous. It tells how God said he was so righteous, he told him what he was going to do to him, how many stars are going to be, how many. He told Abraham things to let him know that, hey, you're 
righteous. I am. I said, you are righteous. And Jesus hadn't come yet. This is God talking to Abraham. We're talking about he was directly focusing his attention on Abraham. Mm -hmm. Think about Noah. Here's a man that is in a sinful situation all around him. I mean, everybody doing crazy stuff in the, in the world he was living in at that time. And God saw him. That's right, I'm going to go, look, let's go back and get just, I want you to listen yeah. to what he said. This is the history. Let me go back to 8, because he's better. This is, this is uh, Genesis 6 and 8. But Noah found grace and favor in the eyes of the Lord. This is the history of the generations of Noah. Now, this is what stands out in that verse. Noah was a just and righteous man. He was a just and righteous man. Blameless in his evil generation. Noah walked habitually in fellowship with God. All right. Yes. Can you even tell me he wasn't righteous? Jesus hadn't come yet. But Noah was righteous in God's eyes. So God saw him, and this is so good. This is just, it's like making that cake, get everything ready, put that oven. God saw him in his eyes as righteous, but in all that he saw, he turned that right around mm -hmm. after Christ went to the cross, and he sees that. He sees us like the Noahs because of Christ. Yeah. I mean, come on, y'all. Yes. You can't have the more than that. It says he walked habitually, habitually in fellowship with the Lord. I mean, and that was Noah. That's just Noah. Think about some other awesome folks in the Bible. Think mm -hmm. about Elizabeth and Zechariah. Mm -hmm. Think about I'm going to give you one for the day How about Mother Teresa Amen. Everybody Kind of skips over Mother Teresa But here's a, here's a lady that, that said She worked with, with people With leprosy Never fazed her because you know what she said mm -hmm. She said and They had to ask her said, well, Teresa, How can you do this You know you work with people that got leprosy And all these diseases and stuff But well, Teresa was righteous You know why because she didn't see the people leprosy. She saw Jesus in those Amen. people. She said, everybody that I talk to, I touch, I hug, I love on, I see them with leprosy. I see them as I see Jesus. And that's when God sees us. Amen. I can't give you a better example than Mother Teresa. Amen. When she said that, that kind of they kind of put the hammer on the nail. I know of a guy that you guys may have heard of. <clears throat> this guy's name is Dick Bujic. This little guy has no arms and no legs. No. An arm, no leg. He just got a body and a head. He's just a body and a head. That's what he is. You know, this guy can swim. He can do things that most people with legs and arms can't do. And he is a believer. He's righteous. He goes out, he ministers everywhere he goes. And here's a guy that doesn't have arms and legs, but guess what? He's got a heart for Jesus. He ministers to young kids. You can see him sitting on the table. This is what's awesome. You can see him like you see the statue here. He's sitting on a table like this, and he's about that. Maybe that tall. And he's moving on the table on those nubs with no arms and no legs. And this guy can do some of it. He can, he's versatile. He's a versatile human being. But he doesn't have the arms that we got, the legs we got. But you know something? He's got a heart to serve God. He's got a heart to serve Christ. And he is righteous. I just want to name some of the people that are here today that. You know, we can go back to the Bible and, and, and talk about the prophets of old and Abraham and Noah and all those people, but we have people right here today that are doing these things. We have, we have y'all. Y'all righteous. All y'all know Jesus Christ. All y'all accepted it. 
Amen. You are righteous. You are clothed in righteousness. And understand that when you leave here, you're still clothed in righteousness. All you need to do is, like it did when you were kids, to play tag. You tag someone else and tell them <laughs> Christ. And they get to be righteous too through God's eyes. So it's a simple methodology if we work it right. And we go outside these walls and do what we should be doing. All of us are ministers. You can minister now. That's right. That's right. We're free to do it. We live in a country where you're not going to get stripes on your back or hung or beat to pass this word out. That's right. We have a freedom, great freedom. Simple to do. You know, I learned that sometimes your family members are the hardest one to bring across the line. But you know something? All right. You can't stop. You got to keep going. You are clothed in righteousness, people. Each and every one of you are yeah. clothed in righteousness. I guess I can't say enough about that because once God has clothed you in his righteousness and told you what and how much he loves you, and how he hears you, and how he loves you, how he cares for you, how when you do fall down and you stumble, he's able to get you back up and never think about what you did. That's the type of God we serve. Right? That's right. That's the type of God that will send his only precious son yeah. on the cross for us. And understand our Human righteousness falls short of God's perfect standard. But through Jesus Christ, we can receive the perfect righteousness when and only when we accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. That's when we can receive it. Each and every one of us. Are deemed as righteousness through Christ. Don't shortchange yourself, y'all. Yeah. Right. Believe me. Don't shortchange yourself when you think about who you are in Christ Jesus. Amen. Don't say to yourself, so because God gave us something that no man, no woman can ever give you. That's right. He gave us something that has eternal. That's right. And we can walk away with it. We Hold on to it. We can think about it daily. We can allow the Holy Spirit to minister our hearts. We can show it like those who show the love for one another. We can do this on a daily basis. And you know what? Every time you walk outside the door and you tell somebody about Christ and they accept him as they know and say, you know what? Christ is, you know, got to do it there. He said, let me set a crown aside for you. <laughs> let me set up here. Crown aside for Brother Ruffin back there after telling Bobby about Jesus Christ. Let me, let me sit a crown aside for Brother Alford because he came up here and told him about Christ and five people accepted the Lord. Yes. The pretty girl back there with the blonde hair. <laughs> hey, when you go outside here and you tell your, your little girlfriend, hey, tell you something. I found out something today, which you already know. You're <laughs> very intelligent, you know. You already know, too. but when you go outside these doors and you go tell your little good buddy, hey, a man came to me and told me something today about Jesus Christ. Let me tell you about this right quick, Carol. Let me tell you, Carol, about this. Let me tell you about this. This Jesus Christ, he can read. Mm -hmm. He can read for real. Yeah. And see, when you do that, God said, hey, mm -hmm. I got a crown for you. Yeah. Put it on the side so when you come up, I got it for you. Yeah. Along with those pieces of gold and everything else. Mm -hmm. All right. All right. Go for that match. Amen. So, our rewarding is like I said earlier, and I'm going to come back to it. Travailing. Yes. We may travail. Everybody probably has been through a travail. Rob, I know you have on that horse, bitch. You yeah. travail, I'm telling you. Bye. That car I saw wasn't no joke. <laughs> right. I don't want no horse biting me no time soon, anytime. I don't care where he bite. Yeah. I'm running. He won't bite me in the wrong area of my body because I'm going to be running. But either way, 
You travail. Mm. And through that suffering, guess what? Amen. You are rewarded. Amen. Everybody. Amen. 